is the Indian Scout still the best midside cruiser? Welcome back, Anonymous Spiker USA. Thumbs up, subscribe. Thanks for all the comments and views on the last videos. Here we are on the bike that started this channel, the 2017 Indian Scout. Is it still the best mid-size cruiser that you can get? As many of you know, this is a highly competitive market for the mid-size. And it appears that the definition of midsize has changed. It used to be 650 to 800-ish. And now this is deemed as a midsize and it's 1133 cc's. So, for intents and purposes of this discussion, let's figure everything from 650 cc's to 1250. The reason I say 1250 is the first direct answer to the Indian Scout that Harley Davidson came out with a Sportster 1250, right? With a Revolution maxed engine. Some will say it was a direct answer to the Scout that was launched in 2015 because it was making such inroads and in sales. Others will say it was coming out anyway. Who knows? Ask the CEO. Now the Harley Sportster, the 1250, I've ridden it, those of you have ridden it, way, way different from the Harley Sportster of days gone by, right? Liquid cooled, super peppy, lots of punch, almost more drag style, the bars. Now, can you customize it? Of course. And with that said, it's going to be assumed that in the midsize arena, everybody is going to replace the seat the handlebars and pretty much the exhaust whether it's a full system or a slip-on that's just par for the course so take that off the table but the harley sportster 1250 great little bike was an answer to this and it's a formidable answer they are selling a lot of those machines now the Harley Purist, they're not so fond of it because of the change. But the new generation and who that was marketed for seems to adapt it to it well. So it looks like a win. Another one in this market, the Kawasaki Vulcan S. Awesome machine. Kawasaki reliability. Dirt cheap price, right? I mean it's like, I don't know, between six and eight thousand dollars. And you get a lot of bang for your buck. You know, there's not a lot of frills, but you talk about pure fun entertainment in the midsize arena. Really good quality bike. Then we have the Honda, right? So when I bought this bike, 2017, original owner, still have it. So here we are for those of you watching this at a later date. It is fall of 2023. So when I bought this, the Sportster S was not an option. That was still in the works. Uh, they had the original Sportster and they had the 48 and all that, which I think are awesome. Um, but way lacking in power compared to the Scout, which is why that Sportster S came out, to answer the power punch. But the Honda at the time, they had the Rebel, Steady Eddie, the 300 and the 500. The 1100 was not an option. And some say again that the 1100 from the Honda Steady Eddie Rebel was an answer to the Scout and the Sportster S. I've ridden the Rebel, awesome fun bike. I'm just not crazy about the looks of it. But it is a heck of a buy in the midsize market. You know, then you have some other players that could be in there. The Suzuki Boulevard M50 maybe. Maybe the Harley Nightster, right? You have the Yamaha. Um, what is the name of that Yamaha? 
That Yamaha Star, I might think it's 750. Right, that's another player. Uh, Honda has the Shadow, which you know you can do anything with those bikes. Another great value. Now, for those of you who are new to the channel, you know this was not my original intention in 2017, in a Saturday in April when I bought this bike. I went to Harley to buy a Fat Boy. Now that's a whole other story, and I'll leave a link to the video right here. But that didn't go so well, so I went down the street, and I, I was looking at Scouts in the back of my mind. Went there, came home with this. Uh, multiple reasons. One, I loved the way it looked. Two, it was 0% financing. And three, the treatment at the dealership was superb. So Indian relaunches in 2015 with the Scout. Now, those of you, it's not an Indian, it's Polaris. Well, yes it is. And I don't know why people <laughs> give Polaris so much trash. It was a brilliant move from a marketing standpoint. As you know, they ran the Victory Line, which was a great motorcycle for almost close to 20 years. And the Scout is a direct descendant from the Victory Octane, which was an awesome bike. Had a little more pep than this, but Polaris decided to make a intelligent business decision, secure the Indian name, the image likeness, the intellectual property, and they slowly faded out the victory line, and they went head on with the big boys by securing the Indian name, thus bringing with it everything that Indian built up from 1901 to the early 1950s. Now, is it the same company? Absolutely not. Is it the history and lineage because it's not one continuous company? It's not. But can they honor that and bring that tradition forward because they now own it? Of course. That's why they did it, right? Brilliant marketing decision. And for us, it reignites the old Harley vs. Indian, right? Not that I care about that either. I just want good products, no matter who makes them. But. You know, they had the Gilroy years in the early 2000s, didn't work. But in 2015, when Polaris, a.k.a. DBA Indian, relaunched the Scout in 2015, it took off. And here we are, six years later, and the Scout line has grown into the Scout Bobber, the Scout Bobber 20, the Rogue, they have the Scout 60. I mean, so many iterations of the Scout. It has just been such a great selling bike for Polaris DBA Indian. I don't care about saying it. I know what it is, and I don't care. Now, why am I saying it's the best mid-size cruiser, in my opinion? And it is all subjective, right? My opinion. I'm not a moto journalist. I didn't sleep at a Holiday Inn Express last night. But I come from a place of an informed opinion by owning this bike for six years, riding tons of other manufacturers all across the board, as you guys know, and I've owned a lot of brands as well, so I'm going to give myself a valid good opinion here, okay? So Scout, right? Liquid cooled, 1133 cc's. I've had two issues with this bike since I got it. The first year, I thought there was a battery issue. I changed the battery to a Duracell 220 CCA. Awesome battery. Five years later, still working great. However, that wasn't the issue. Turns out there was a recall on the starter. I never got stranded, never had a problem. But when I replaced the battery and it still wasn't cranking right, I was like, oh, let me check the forums. I find out what the issue is. There's a recall. I take the notice into my dealer, boom, boom, fixed up, zero issue. Uh, I've started this bike thousands of times since they repair, and I have not had one single issue. It starts every time, unless I forgot to charge the battery. As we know, you know, battery's five years old, so it's time for a new one, and I'm going to get the same one again, because it's been awesome. But, I've had that issue, which 
was really even an issue. And then I had another mechanical. The shifter bolt, when I was on the highway, snapped. So I had no ability to use a shifter. I was able to finagle it to get it to the dealer. I couldn't get it out of fifth gear, but that's another great thing about this Scout. The torque is so great that even though I had to slow down for red lights and everything else, try to time it to get back to the dealer, it had enough low-end torque, even in fifth gear at 35 miles an hour, I could get it there. Replace the bolt, no problems. That was in 2019, so four years ago. Other than that, it's been standard maintenance. Tires, oil change, and then it wasn't until I hit 20,000 miles on this bike, it called for an air filter, so I put in the Trask High Flow air filter just because, uh, but I have slip-ons, I mean, and I'll walk around, you guys know I've done so much to this bike, but stock, it has been such a solid, reliable performer. I mean, absolutely fantastic. That's not to say that those other machines are not. I am sure they are. But my direct experience with the Indian Scout, Polaris as a company, Indian as a brand, I personally, with the Scout engine, have had zero issues. It has been flawless. The power delivery, phenomenal. 100 horsepower, 72 foot-pound of torque stock. Now, I may get a tune on this now. I've had it six years. I did the, the slip-ons. I have the high flow air filter, right? So why not get the tune to make it a stage one? Maybe I will. Do I need it? I don't. Just something fun to do. But when you talk about, you know, bang for your buck. So when I bought this, I think these were running like 11.9 back then. I think they're 12.9 now, maybe a little more for your base scout. But I mean, it's such a good bike. Um, obviously, you know your Rebel is going to be probably close to that. Your Sportster's more, and your Kawasaki is by far the cheapest. Your Suzuki Boulevard M50 is a little cheaper. Um, but you know, pros and cons with all of them. All quality bikes. Look at this. I mean, the scout, the pull. <laughs> it's awesome. You know, I have a lot of bikes. I've ridden a lot of bikes. Every time I get on this bike, I still think it is my favorite bike. I don't think I'll ever, I don't think I'll ever get rid of this bike. I mean, it's, it's that good to me. Um, you know, and, and you could just keep reinventing it too. If you look at people that own these, right? Let's look at uh, Bearded Bobber. The things he's done with his are, oh my God, he did an unbelievable custom on his. Meatball Rebel, another one. Uh, Picasso, he rebuilds them. Star Bobber. I mean, if you go with just search Indian Scout, go on Instagram, how many people own these bikes and what they've done with them? And yes, you can do all of that stuff with all of those other bikes. There's no question. So, you know, cosmetic changes aside. The Indian Scout, you know, from 2015 all the way through present. Just such a good quality machine. So if you're looking for the mid-sized market and you're looking for a winner... Hard to beat the Indian Scout. So sound off. Tell me about your mid-sized cruisers and what you think is the best. Again, subjective, my opinion. I bought it. Love that Vulcan. Love the new Sportster. The Honda Rebel's cool. The M50 from Suzuki. The Yamaha. They're all good in their own right. They all bring their own things, but... The total package to me, Indian Scout. There goes a Lambo. So 
So for performance, handling, reliability, aesthetics, customization, cost of ownership, power to weight ratio, just plain fun, enjoyment of riding, the Indian Scout is a home run. Every time I take this bike out, people make a comment. They don't do that about the other bikes. Occasionally they do. This one, every time. Every time. No matter who it is or what they're riding. Hey, nice bike. Oh, that's cool. It looks good. You name it, I've heard it. Never heard Ah, it's a piece of crap. Oh, you're riding Indian. I haven't heard it. So... I mean, this particular version, 2017, with that color scheme, I think is awesome. Right? Red, white, blue. America. But, and all, you know, the little red pinstriping. Um, you know, and, and I've done a lot, right? So, I changed out the, the belt guard, the sissy bar, added the bags, the grips, the end caps, the GPS, the Arlen Ness gas cap, uh, some different stickers, Joker machine parts, uh, the Dart Marlin windscreen, custom Dynamics Pro Beam, the Metzler wide white walls with the wire rims, the Kyriakin mini pegs, changed out the brake peg and the shifter peg to match, the primary cover, the RC exhaust, uh, the Mustang solo seat, the um, the tail tidy kit from Radiance, the LED run stop turn, the fender bolt, the Accutronics side mounted license plate holder. Um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I've done a lot, but just stock, like I said earlier, change the bars in the seat and those big gigantic restrictive exhaust cans then you got a home run you don't need to do anything else i just did it cosmetically because it's what i liked and i knew i was keeping this bike so i'm not getting rid of it uh all the bikes in my garage goldwing himalayan triumph if i had to get rid of them I, they those would go first this would be the absolute last to go there's no question about it that's how much i like the indian scout so pretty strong recommendation six years in i'd buy another one tomorrow so, I mean, I've ridden this bike in the winters in Pennsylvania, snow, the summers in Louisiana, 100 degrees plus, pre-hurricane rains in Mississippi, and I have never had a problem. It's just a tremendous bike. Indian, Polaris, whatever you want to call them. They knocked it out of the park when they came out with the Scout. And what better bike to nail than the one that was the best they ever had, the 1920 Indian Scout. Serendipity! You know, other than your routine maintenance, not going to have any issues with this thing, in my opinion. Um, you know, I just changed the... Um, the clutch cable, uh, the Barnett stainless steel clutch cable, phenomenal. I had 18,000 something miles on the other one. I could have got some more out of it, but for the 109 bucks, rather be safe than starry. Stay ahead of the game. This stock engine has just been flawless. Such a great performer. I mean, here we are, what, fifth gear, right? So obviously, six speed. Let's just bring it on down. I got nobody behind me. Get it down the first. Oh, got somebody behind me, so you ready? Just getting up to fifth, and the thing just pulls. Just such great power. Engineered 
awesomely power to weight ratio awesome and I mean if you want to get a tune give it a little more horsepower give it a little more torque I mean this thing is just you make something that's awesome even better so but it's not needed at all I mean a lot of the crap we do to our bikes isn't needed but you get the point stock out of the box go buy yourself a scout change the seat the bars that's an ergonomic thing the drag bars some people like them I like the apes so you don't have to change the bars the seat you have to change because you're getting 80 miles and then you're getting a numb butt on that stock seat and then the pipes no you don't have to change them sounds terrible and they look terrible and they're mega heavy they're like 25 pounds but you know throw on a different seat and throw on some slip-ons and you're good to go I just if you're looking to buy a Scout do it you just cannot go wrong the handling tremendous the balance tremendous power to weight ratio tremendous um, you know dealer network for me I've never had a problem I know there's not as many as Harley but I you know even if it's 40 miles away it's a reason to go ride it there right oh well, what if you can't ride it well get a trailer and tow it I mean so what it's not it's not an issue to me it's not an issue um, it has just been such a good fun bike uh, and you know you can customize it so many different ways and you know everybody say the aftermarket support isn't there well in 2015 it wasn't but it has grown so much because of the popularity of this bike and I have noticed a way more of them on the road in the last three years four years and it's a good bike for everybody whether you're an experienced rider and you just want something fun around town or you're a first-time rider uh, it's not a bad option it might be a little much but you'll grow into it meaning if you bought something smaller in three months you want to get out of it this is probably your next step so it, it covers a whole plethora of riding levels Let's set this roundabout just like look at this woo handling handling I mean you can just rip it right in those of you who have watched me ride some of the mountain roads and the twisties and you see how this thing handles I mean just just tremendous now some of the gripes people oh the shocks are no good to travel you get three inches in the rear could it be better eh, probably but it also has a 25.3 inch seat height which is part of the reason that the travel is only three inches right it wants to keep it low to the ground so pros and cons right when I'm riding a mid-sized cruiser I want to feel it anyway so I don't mind the three inches of travel I, I have no problem with that uh, if I want cushy suspension I'll jump on my gold wing I won't feel anything but you know when I want to get the visceral gnarly down and dirty ride you're getting on the scout sound off in the comments I'm sure there'll be a lot of commentary on why you love why you hate or blast an Indian because it's a Polaris I'm sure that's coming bring it on because Polaris is actually a great company with a tremendous research and development department who puts loads of money into their products so I think Indian as a brand is going to be around for a while for those reasons so let's just Pull a little stop right here. A little lakeside stop. Like I said, 2017 Indian Scout. Now let's just, I mean, it comes obviously stock. Look at the engine. It's awesome looking. You got the inlaid eye for Indian, the chrome tops, the black with the chrome insets. They just did a great job. I mean aesthetically to me from all the other bikes in that class to me the Scout is the winner and yes it is subjective 
but I like it the best out of all of them. Um, it's been reliable, it's been dependable, it's been fun, enjoyable, cost of ownership has been bare bones. So when you're buying a motorcycle, you know, what else are you looking for? Thanks for watching, and don't forget.